Casey, what a day. I mean, I think he started today saying he's going to vote aye to get it out of committee. And then a lot of things happened. Uh, tell me how the sequence worked that led to this overtime in the game, if you will. Chris, it was really remarkable. I mean, we in the morning got this statement from Jeff Flake that said, I'm going to vote for Judge Kavanaugh. And we all thought, you know, that was potentially that. That was potentially going to put more pressure on these other Republican senators who were still on the fence. Uh, we thought the hearing was going to go forward. Uh, the mood was going to remain contentious. Everyone at each other's throats. And then something changed. That hallway, uh, that elevator encounter that you showed uh, with Jeff Flake happened as he was way on his way to the committee room. When he got to the committee room, his, after his statement had broken, reporters told Chris Coons, who's a friend of Flake's, that the statement had been put out. And Coons became visibly emotional. Uh, he, he's not a guy who typically swears. He used swear words, but in, in, a, in, a, in a tone that was more sad than angry. Uh, and that was what preceded what then played out in the hearing room. And remember, they were in there for hours. It started at 9.30. We didn't have an outcome until after 1.30. And this was about, Chris, and I hope you'll indulge me for just a second. This was about a personal relationship between two people who have served together in the Senate. It, it was with the cameras off, and it was because they trusted each other, that Jeff Flake could trust what Senator Coons was saying. And that kind of an interaction, that kind of trust, that has been missing from the Senate and from the Congress more broadly. And that is what is breaking it. And if you think about the outside political forces, and we've seen a lot of this this week, the political tribalism, the way the bases in each party enforce the codes that they have. And I am interested to see uh, what kind of reception Coons and Flake receive uh, from people on their respective sides over the course of the next week. That is forcing people to never do things like this. Instead, you have people, I mean, Susan Collins has, you know, had to get driven out of the Capitol tonight in a police car because there are people who have been threatening her uh, in a way that makes her feel uh, very uncomfortable. This is a moment in our politics where people have to decide what kind of people do you want running this country? Do you want people doing what Jeff Flake and Senator Coons did today? Or do you want people acting differently? Uh, and I think really uh, it's something that we're all going to have to grapple with as this process unfolds. Casey, I can hear in your voice your concern on our republic, but not just as a reporter. And I agree completely. I hope this does turn the tide against this uh, the in the evil incivility that's going on, because I think it does meet some of the demands of the people who criticize this nomination. The FBI is a pretty good organization with a lot of resources. It can get a lot done in a week. Thank you very much for that Agreed. reporting with heart. Casey Hunt. Thank you. Let's go to Michelle Goldberg, who's written beautifully about this with passion. Do you think this will begin? I mean, I do. I'll make the case. The FBI's got a lot of people. They could put 50 people down to Rehoboth or Dewey Beach or whatever the hell it is down there and find this character, and they can get them on the record. I don't care what, if they spend enough time with them. The same with all the people that may have been at the party over in Chevy Chase area. All the people that may have been there. All the people that made this woman who went to high school in Gaithersburg, what she has to say. The woman up in New York, Ramirez, who said something awful happened with her and him one night. It does seem they've got the firepower, the candle power, to find out a good percentage of the truth about this guy. Your thoughts, Michelle? You wrote yeah, beautifully no. today. I mean, I think I think that's right. And I think that that's why this came as I mean, this came as a profound relief to me, because what Christine Blasey Ford, what the Democrats have been asking for has not been that radical. Right. They've been asking for an FBI investigation. They've been asking for at least the at least a process as decent as Anita Hill got, which is now remembered as a national shame. And so I think that, yes, there are a lot of leads. It's been crazy the way yesterday was presented as he said, she said, when by all acknowledgments, there is another witness, another witness that Christine Blasey Ford identified as being in the room, Two more. wanted to be subpoenaed, wanted the FBI to yeah. interview. And people are asking, acting like as if that there is no way to get at the truth of what happened 36 years ago. When, as you said, there are a lot of different leads that you can follow. And that's what she's been asking for all along. And, and following up on that, Michelle, it seems like it's not too hard to crack the case made by the nominee. First of all, if there was a party. He will deny, and they know he was there, and he denies it. Well, that's a problem. If he is shown to be in public a man who drinks too much and gets belligerent, and he said, oh, I'd hardly drink at all, I have a few beers, he kept saying, I like beer. It seems to me that he can be caught in a perjury trap pretty easily if the FBI goes out there and really does the job. 
Well, to me, one of the questions going forward is if they don't actually find anything definitive on the sexual assault, and we don't know if they will, whether it will matter the sort of smaller lies that he told while he was testifying yes, to Congress that are almost definitely, I mean, he was almost certainly dishonest about his drinking record, you know, talking about how he had never blacked out when many classmates um, say otherwise. He seemed to have been dishonest about the meaning of certain kind of um, sexual innuendos in his yearbook, certain slang in his yearbook. There was plenty of times when he could have just been a little bit frank and, you know, maybe admitted okay. that he used that he was a jerky high school student. And instead, he put forward this image as a choir boy. I have a feeling that all of that is going to be shown pretty quickly to be untrue. The question is whether any of that will be definitive um, when yeah. the Senate finally votes on this. A hard line to defend, choir boy. Anyway, two women have accused Brett Kavanaugh and his friend Mark Judge of sexual misconduct. Of course, I think it's a stronger word than misconduct here at parties when they were younger. Well, yesterday, under oath, Dr. Ford accused Kavanaugh of assaulting her while Judge looked on, an allegation he's denied. And as a central figure, Mr. Judge was never called to testify to speak to the FBI. Not yet. Well, I think he's going to have his day. Dr. Ford was asked if uh, she would like to see that happen. Would you like Mark Judge to be interviewed in connection with the background investigation and the serious, credible allegations that you've made? That would be my preference. I'm not sure it's really up to me, but I certainly would feel like I could be more helpful to everyone if I knew the date that he worked at the Safeway so that I could give a, better, a more specific date of the assault. Well, with the investigation reopened now, as of today, the judge, uh, through his lawyer, said he would cooperate with any law enforcement agency that is assigned to confidentially investigate these allegations. Paul Butler, what does that mean? It seems to me he's a figure in this case, a possible witness, a possible perp, if you will. And he's saying, I want to be confidential. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So the bureau will do 302s that will go to all of the senators and to the president. The, Once they're completed. Yes. So the FBI is going to be looking at witnesses, at corroborating information and assessing the credibility of Kavanaugh. With witnesses, you have someone you never have in a sexual assault case. You have an eyewitness. They have to talk to Mark Judge. Yes, his lawyer is admitted a letter. But when you're sitting in a room with two or three law enforcement agents skilled in the art of interrogation, that's a different story. Corroborating evidence. Dr. Ford has a very specific memory of the house. It's layout, uh, the rooms. She says she doesn't know the address. FBI agents will drive her around the neighborhood to see if she can locate it. And as Michelle alluded to, whether he is credible, whether Judge Kavanaugh has told the truth under oath to the Senate. Among other things, he said he'd never been to any party like the one that Dr. Ford described. I don't think anybody believes that. Again, when the Senate is confronted with FBI statements yeah. about little lies that, that Judge Kavanaugh told time after time, they will have a decision to make. What about the woman who was at the party downstairs? Another witness to the occasion who would remember the occasion, I, I think. Again, there's literally... Uh, a lot of people who they could um, talk to, including people who've come up in the other investigations because they have, or the other allegations, because they have consistent statements. So, so for example, Michael Avenatti's client, he says that, yes, this was a man who was frequently drunk and he watched a woman be, um, be sexually assaulted. Uh, 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 um, I'm sorry, um, Mark Judge's girlfriend during college has the same story. She doesn't place Judge Kavanaugh there, but she said Mark Judge told her about an experience that he had when he was in college or high school in which a woman was sexually assaulted with a bunch of guys watching. The FBI has enough people to do this quickly, right? Yeah, and one last thing, Chris, they have lie detector tests, and guess what? The D.C. Circuit in 2016 decided a case which someone was complaining about law enforcement <clears throat> using lie detector tests. They, what they said it wasn't credible. The D.C. Circuit <clears throat> said they were credible for law enforcement agents to use in criminal investigations and background checks. The guy who wrote that opinion, his name is Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.